following tells the story of a man who has a compulsive need to follow strangers around the city and inadvertently gets caught up with a criminal and a murder plot. What's up everybody and welcome to my Christopher Nolan review series. I believe this is the first review series that I've done based off of a director. It's something kind of cool, but we've got Tenet coming here in just over a month. Uh, this is a review series that I have wanted to do for a while because I do have two or three patron requests for some Christopher Nolan films and obviously he is one of my favorite, probably one of our all of our favorite directors, so a lot of movies that are going to be fun to talk about. I figured what better time than now to go ahead and start knocking out these reviews. So we're going to start with his first film following. This is the only movie made by Christopher Nolan that I have never seen before until just yesterday. So this is a first time viewing with this review. And with all that being said, guys, talking about patron requests and everything, please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button. And if you are interested in becoming a patron and joining along the fun with review requests or being able to add into the Patreon pick polls that I do or get movie digital code, things like that, please check the video description down below and the link for that will be down below. It's the best way to support my channel. Love all of you guys for your support as always. Thank you so much. Now talking about following. Let's go. So this is an interesting movie. This is very clearly like a student film, an independent film. I think it was made for a couple of thousand dollars. This was very much Christopher Nolan's baby where this was his first venture into making a mostly full length film. It's like 70 minutes long, so it was definitely short. And with that being said, some of the things that I'm going to say in my negative columns, I want it to be said with the understanding that this is a very damn good movie for what he had to work with. And with that being said, some of the positives with following is that I do like, it, it, it's kind of like a proto memento in a way, the way that he structures this movie. I do like the way that this gets right out of the gate with Christopher Nolan's filmmaking with this mind bending, kind of tricking the audience style of story structure. Now there's gonna be something I'm gonna talk about in my negatives regarding the way that he structures it, but the way that you have this simple story of this guy that has this compulsive need to follow around strangers and he suddenly gets entwined with this guy who has a very similar need where he has this need to break into people's houses and not even necessarily steal anything, but just do things inside of their secluded home to suddenly throw their life out of whack. You know, it's kind of like somebody watched Dane Cook's B and E segment and said, "I can make a movie about that." That must have driven that family crazy. If nothing else, you know what I should have done? Broken in and at least left something that wasn't there before. You know, that would help them. Like, nothing, nothing seems to be missing, but there is a lava lamp here now. And it's an interesting story. It's an interesting idea in there to where you have these two guys that are starting to case places and break into houses not with the want of finding valuables or seeing what they can gain, but you know, like one scene where he takes a pair of panties and throws it into the guy's jean pocket so that when his wife finds it, suddenly that's gonna screw their lives up. Or, you know, he takes something that they have that is hidden for valuable reason and throws it on the floor so that they know that, oh, somebody has seen this now. Just simple little things to throw people's normal day life out of whack. And you start thinking about that and like, what if I came home and realized that somebody broke into my house and nothing was missing but like my Blu-ray shelves were, were misarranged. Like, how would that fuck with me? Something so simple like that, how would that mess with my mind? It's an interesting idea. It's also an interesting relationship between these two characters where you have a mostly unnamed protagonist. He gives himself a name, but we're led to believe that's not his true name. And then this guy Cobb, who is this compulsive thief or burglar, and their relationship to me was very similar to like the narrator and Tyler Durden in Fight Club to where one has this very compulsive weird need and the other one kind of compliments that. It almost made me think that that was gonna end up being a similar plot twist towards the end, but there's a very interesting little dynamic there between those two characters where they have these very non-essential things that they do in their lives to make their lives feel essential. It's just, it's an interesting idea and it's explored interestingly through these two characters. You know, just give them something to uh, chat about. Why would you want to do that? Should find them in his trousers and ask him what he's been doing. <laughs> yeah, but why would you want to fuck up their relationship? Don't you listen. You take it away and show them what they have. Now, as far as my mixed aspects, the one thing that really stood out to me that it's obvious because of the low budget and what Nolan had to work with that this was kind of something that was going to come along with that, but being that the film was made in black and white, the casting it's not the greatest cast in the world. They don't have the most talent here. You could definitely see some flaws in their acting ability, but because the film was in black and white, 
and because of how independently this story is told, it almost had like a classic cinema vibe to me in some spots, where like you look at like some old Jimmy Stewart movies and you know, the acting caliber back then was not quite the same expectation that it is now. So sometimes you can go back and watch some classic black and white films and be like, ooh, the acting's not so great, but it was probably perfectly serviceable back in the day. It kind of has that same effect here for me. Some people will watch it and just say, eh, it's independent actors, they're not great, but they service the story fine. But something about the way this film was told, how simple the story was, how few the locations were, it kind of had that classic cinema vibe to me. I don't know if Nolan was going for that. I don't know if that's why he chose to have it in black and white other than budgetary constraints, but it was an interesting thing here to where some scenes would have definitely been better with better actors, but it also had just an interesting little flavor because of that limitation. Now moving on to the negatives. And like I said, I understand fully that most of these come out of budgetary constraints. It is what it is, but I have to be honest. The story itself is not the most interesting story in the world, and the way that they have this non-linear story, similar how he did with Memento, where they tell things out of sequence and some things are flashbacks and scenes are intercut to where you have one look of a character, then suddenly he's clean cut in the next one and you kind of have to figure out throughout the film where this timeline fits together. That gimmick kind of felt a little bit more forced in this than in movies where it was basically perfected in Memento. Again, budgetary constraints, independent film, first time director, I get it. But there's a story here that I almost feel like if they had told it in the vein of like usual suspects to where, you know, he walks in to start telling his story to this detective and the whole movie is told in flashback and then it goes back to the end of his conversation at the end to give us all of our reveals. I almost feel like the movie would have worked better that way. Uh, it just felt purposely convoluted and kind of purposely mind bending in a way that wasn't as interesting as I've seen Nolan do in his later films the way that he has things out of sequence. So that didn't quite work for me the way that he did it in following. This kind of goes to what my mixed aspect was, but I also feel like there was a negative in this with not really being able to hit me with these twists because of the acting caliber and because of the way that the, the script was written around these characters' dialogue. Like there's some reveals here and there where you find out that this person's actually scheming together with this person and this is actually the motive where it should be this huge like, oh shit, what's gonna happen now moment? But because it happens and it's just kind of nonchalantly given to us through some somewhat amateurish dialogue, it just doesn't hit. You watch it and then all of a sudden it starts happening and you're like, oh, okay, so they were working together. Okay, that's, that's cool. All in all, guys, not a long review, not a long movie. It's an interesting movie to try to review because I don't like being unfair, too harsh to independent films or like fan films and things like that. That's why I haven't reviewed very many of them. And this kind of fits into that, even though it's Christopher Nolan. But at the same time, it was an interesting little venture to see where this guy came, how much talent he actually had as a storyteller, as a filmmaker, even back then with a no budget. This is one of those no budget films. And it was an interesting watch. It's a movie that I probably won't have a whole lot of desire to revisit. And whenever I do my inevitable ranking, it's probably going to be bringing a toothpick to a gunfight to that ranking with how awesome Christopher Nolan's movies are. But I don't regret seeing it. I think if you, if you like film, if you enjoy his filmography and you want to explore where some directors came from, there's certainly much worse movies you could check out with this. But not a movie that I think I'm going to add to my collection or revisit or praise and tell everybody they have to go see. It's an interesting watch. So if you're a fan of Nolan or if you are a fan of classic independent cinema and you want to see something that this director can do with a shoestring budget, definitely check this out. It has a lot of his calling cards that he has mastered later on in film. But overall, I'm going to tell you to stream it. So what do you guys think of Following? Have you seen this movie? Did you actually see Following before Christopher Nolan became Christopher Nolan and you've been a fan or known who this guy is all the way back then? Or are you like me and want to check it out after really loving this guy's later films? And where did you fall on it? Did you enjoy seeing him in his student infancy stage? Or do you feel like there was a lot of flaws in this film that he eventually worked out and created some of the best movies that we've ever seen. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think of following, what's your favorite Christopher Nolan film, what's the review that you're looking forward to the most. And as always guys, like and share this video, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed it and wanna join in on all my crazy little followers. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.